Now let's have a look at this denominator. What on earth is this? Okay, I just have a look at it. The first thing you can see is that it shares a lot in common with the numerator. See that? You're still adding up a bunch of things. You're still calculating differences from the mean. What's different between the denominator and the numerator? What's different? Say it again, Russ. Okay, so first, there are things being squared. But then weirdly, immediately after squaring, what do you do? You take the square root. What's up with that? Square root of some number being squared. Now, I wonder if you can think all the way back to year 11, we actually defined the square root of a square. It was a thing you met in the context of graphing. So far away from the world of statistics, does anyone remember what you get when you take the square root of the square of a number? If I put some notation here, would you remember? Isn't this the absolute value? If I took a number like, say, negative 5, and you squared it, you'd get 25. Then when you take the square root, you just get 5. So in other words, the fact that it was negative before just kind of disappears. So the square root of a square is the same as the absolute value of that number. Okay. Now essentially what the absolute value is telling you is not whether you are up or down, it's telling you how far away you are, right? If I said to you the absolute value of negative 5, which we just said before is 5, what that means is how far are you from the origin? Like I don't care which direction you are, whether you're up or down, I just want to know how far you are. Does that make sense? Okay, now why do we divide by this? Again, I'm trying to get at I'm trying to answer these questions up here. Why am I doing this, okay? Let me call your mind back to this data. Do you remember what this was about? This was about my running speed. Do you remember that, okay? So I particularly have given you the graph which tells me my speed, okay, uh, in kilometers per hour. So you can see um, the minimum speed I'm doing is somewhere around 12 kilometers per hour, and my max, I haven't ever really hit 14 kilometers per hour. Okay, and just imagine this. Imagine I came to you tomorrow and I said, guys, 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 I have such exciting news. I ran at 15 kilometers per hour last night for like whatever number of distance, right? Hopefully you would be like at least a little bit impressed if I said I've done 15 kilometers per hour. Why? Like off the data, why would that be a suitable thing to be happy about? Yeah, Keegan. It's much higher than anything. Yeah, this is not just higher. This is like a decent chunk high. It's not even on the graph, actually. That's how, that's how far I am from getting to 15. It's not even on my plot, okay? Now, the reason why you can see that is because one kilometer per hour is a lot in comparison to my speed. Like, it's about 10%, isn't it? 10% faster. That's a lot of effort, okay? Now, let's compare that to if I said, okay, I'm driving on a highway. I'm driving on a highway. What's the speed limit of a highway? 110 kilometers per hour on, like, a federal highway, right? 110 kilometers per hour, you don't even feel the difference between 110 and 109, do you? Why not? It's a smaller percentage of the total. Let's come back to here, right? What are you doing down here? This process of dividing through by the absolute value, this is the word that you need. This process is called standardizing. What you are trying to get a sense of is... That one kilometer per hour, is it a lot or is it a little? Is it 10%? Whoa, that's a huge improvement. Or a huge, like if I'm slow, if I went at uh, 10 kilometers per hour, you're like, wow, you really like dialed it in. You hardly put any effort into that, right? One kilometer per hour might mean a lot or it might mean very, very little. But you don't know until you compare to what your averages are, right? And that's the process of standardizing because I can say 10% versus 1%, I can now compare those. Does that make sense? It's standard across everyone. If you said, like some of you I assume are much faster runners than me, for you 10% would be different, right? 10%, but that can be like similar, something we can compare to. And that's why it's called standardizing. So this is dividing through by magnitude. We are no longer comparing a fast thing with a slow thing. We're comparing percentages, right? Proportions. And that's why we can think about something in a standard way. Okay. All right. So let's go back up to the top because, because we can answer some of these questions now, right? This is the correlation coefficient. What is the purpose of the correlation coefficient? What is it trying to do? And the answer is, it's trying to say, if we have a look at a, whoopsie daisy, 
we have a look at a data set, it's trying to say how much do all of those data points deviate from the mean? Let me write that down for you, okay? This is about how much do all the data points, I guess a word we could use for that, for all the data points, is we could say collectively, like I'm trying to consider them all together. How much do they collectively deviate, go up and down, or you know, be a distance away from the mean? And again, when I say mean, I actually should say means because there's one for x and one for y, but you get the idea, okay? Now, how does it mathematically achieve that purpose? Well, let's have a look at what's going on here in the formula, right? Firstly, it calculates some differences, right? It calculates x differences and y differences. Multiplies them together to get a single number, and then you add that for every single data point, okay? So what it does is it adds all the differences from the mean, and then what was that denominator doing? The word we used was it standardizes, so we can actually compare these things. So every correlation coefficient you will see, every r you will see, is between negative 1 and 1, which is like a percentage, right? Negative 100% all the way to 100%. You can't get any bigger or smaller than that. So it adds all the differences from the mean in a standardized way. Okay.